Hey everybody, we're back for our second video under the umbrella of multiplying polynomials. So we did the first seven examples in the first video and now we're on to example eight. So we're picking up right where we left off. So let's take a look at it. It says for example eight, let me highlight over here, find the area of the rectangle below. So you may wanna pause the video. You may be able to do this without me. Feel free to pause this video. Uh, when we do this in class, I'm gonna allow students to work together and try to come up with this on their own because I really think you can do it without me. Uh, and then come back and check your work. Okay, you're back. So here's the correct answer for finding the area of this rectangle. Well, you have to know from the start that the formula for area of a rectangle is length times width. Without that, you're not getting anywhere. Now, filling in what we know, well, we're looking for area, so we'll keep that as an A. The length of my rectangle is right here, 7x plus 10. So I'll fill that in for length. And then the width of the rectangle is right here, 4x plus 8. So hopefully you set this up the same. And now we know how to multiply binomials. So my little cover technique here, cover up that 10 and off we go distributing. So we need to take seven X times four X and seven X times eight. Here we go, seven X times four X, that's 28 X squared. Seven X times eight is a positive 56 X. Slide this over, get ready to distribute again. Taking a positive 10 times 4x and a positive 10 times 8. So that's going to give me a positive 40x and a positive 80. Okay, some like terms here in the middle. A 56x and a 40x. So we've got ourselves 28x squared plus 96x plus 80. This is the area. Now, let me show you something pretty cool. I don't want you just doing this. I mean, I do want you just doing this to do it because you're learning the skill of multiplying uh, binomials, polynomials. But let me just show you something. Let's pick a value for X. You know X just stands for a number. It's like holding the place for a number. So let's just say that X, oh, let's make it one. Let's just make life easy. Let's let X be one. So if X is one, let's look at our length. Plugging one in here, the length would be seven times one plus 10, which would be 17. And the width, okay, if X is one, the width, I'll just write this here, would equal four times one plus eight. Well, four times one plus eight is 12. So when X is one, you have a 17 by 12 rectangle. So if I was finding the area, length times width, then my area would be, I actually don't know 17 times 12 right off the top of my head, so I'm gonna cheat here. 17 times 12 is 204. So our area is gonna be 204 units squared. They didn't give me dimensions here, so I'll just go with that. Now I want to show you something cool. If you take this formula that we got for area, once we multiplied these binomials, let's see what happens if I plug an x value of 1 into here. So if this is my area, then let's plug a 1 in. So 28 times 1 squared plus 96 times one plus 80. So when I put that in the calculator, because again, I'm just being a little lazy here for time's sake. Let me try to get this so you can see it all. Here we go. Okay, so 28 times one to the second power plus 96 times one plus 80. Boy, I hope I get 204. Bingo, 204. So you see, it's just a different way to express the area. 
See, you're getting the same thing. Whether you find the length and the width first and multiply, or if you multiply and then plug the length or the value of x in. So just food for thought. Okay, two to go. Let's turn over to example nine. Find the area of the brick patio. Okay, I don't know if you can see. It's very light. You can see the bricks right here. See, these are bricks. I don't know how your copy is, but my copy is really light. But the brick patio is this sort of grayish part. Okay? So in order to find the area of the gray, again, I want you to think about this on your own. If I just give you the answer, then you're not really thinking. So why don't you go ahead and pause the video, come back, and hit play when you think you might have something that makes sense. Okay, you're back. Well, let's see if what you did makes sense. Here's the deal. I see two distinct rectangles. I see this big outer rectangle, and then I see this smaller white inner rectangle, right? And I see dimensions, I see like a width and a length here. So I'm already thinking, I see the word area here, right? So I'm thinking length times width. And then I see a length and a width here. And I see area, so I'm thinking, okay, should I be taking like this times this and this times this? So that's my first thought. I kind of have two rectangles going on here. So I'm going to write here area of larger, can you read that? Area of larger rectangle equals, and then I'm going to find the area of the larger rectangle. So if I take the length times the width, let's see, my length would be here running along this side, 3x plus 7. And my width, again, I'm going the larger rectangle here, 3x minus 1. So for area, I'm going to take 3x plus 7 times 3x minus 1. Okay, now I know how to do that. So I'm going to cover up the positive 7 here and distribute. Okay, so here we go. 3x times 3x is 9x to the second power. 3x times negative 1 is negative 3x. Slide it. 7 times 3x is positive 21x. 7 times negative 1 is negative 7. Combining the insides here, the like terms, I've got negative 3x plus 21x, which is going to be positive 17x. So 9x squared plus 17x minus 7 is the area of the larger rectangle. Now let's think about what that means. I'm going to use a pencil and I'm going to color very lightly. When you take this length, times this width, we just found all of this area, including the white part here. I mean, it fills it all in, but we don't want all that area. We just want the brick patio. So what I'm thinking is, if we find the area of this little rectangle and subtract it away from all this, so figure all of it minus this central part here, we should have the leftovers which are shaded in gray, okay? So let's finish this off by saying that we're next going to find the area of the smaller rectangle. And that will be a little bit simpler because um, I'm taking an X times a 2x plus 5. If I do length first, it'd be 2x plus 5 times x. But again, you've seen this on Alex. You can distribute 
sort of backwards, so to speak. The X doesn't always have to be in the front. If it's on the back here, it's no problem. You can just distribute this way. And so that's going to be X times 2X is 2X to the second power. And X times 5 is 5X. So there's my area of my smaller. Now, I want the brick patio. So I'm going to finish this problem by saying that the area of the patio equals the big area, 9x squared plus 17x minus 7 minus the white, which is 2x squared plus 5x. Large minus small gives us leftovers. All right, now this is backtracking to a previous lesson where you're subtracting polynomials. Don't forget, there is a negative one sitting right here, which we need to distribute here so that our signs stay correct. So here we go. Um, running out of space here, to be honest with you. That's okay, I'm gonna bring it, actually, let me just grab another sheet of paper here. Actually, no, I won't. What I'll do is I will just come up to the top. So guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go equals. Can you see that? So 9x squared plus 17x minus seven, that just stays put. Here we go. Negative one times 2x squared is negative 2x squared. And negative one times positive 5x is negative 5x. Okay, this is still area of the brick patio. And last but not least, we will combine like terms. So let's get our squares together here. We have a 9x squared and a negative 2x squared. So that will be 7x squared. And then we've got a 17x with a minus 5x. So that'll be positive 12x. And we have a lone whole number here, negative seven, so minus seven. And that will be the polynomial expression that represents the area of the brick patio. Okay? Very cool. All right, now let's finish this off and go to example 10. It says, find the surface area, okay, surface area and volume of the rectangular prism below. Okay, so let's just go in order. We'll start with surface area. Okay, surface area. Now, surface area is something I think you probably saw in your math past, but we'll review it just in case you've forgotten. Surface area is nothing more than looking at your shape or your object here, which in this case is three-dimensional. So you're looking at your three-dimensional object here, rectangular prism, like a box, right? And you basically find the area of all the surfaces, and then you add those areas together. So it's pretty cool. So if you think about it, let's kind of look at the front, right? Let's look at the front and I'm, I'll color this in. Let's color this green. So let's talk about the area of the green surface, which is the front. Well, we need a length and a width, don't we? Because it's a rectangle. So we've got the length right here. Okay, I'll, call, I'll highlight this in blue, x plus two. But we need, that's this guy, but now we need this dimension right here and there's nothing written on these guys. But if you think about it, this dimension right here, which is x minus two, which is this dimension here, is gonna mimic this guy. So if this is x minus two, then I'm also gonna call this x minus two, right? So when I take my length times my width of my first surface, I'm gonna take x plus two times x minus two, okay? 
So let's do that according to what we've been studying. So I'm gonna cover up this two and I'm gonna distribute. So x times x is gonna equal x squared. x times negative two, negative two x. Switch it. Two times x is positive two x. And two times negative two is negative four. Awesome. Now, highlight the like terms. Negative 2x, positive 2x. Well, the negative 2x and the positive 2x eliminate or cancel to zero. So it looks like we've just got x squared minus four. But here's the catch. Think about this. If this is a box that you're looking at, okay, there's a front with this area but back here, there's also a back with that same area. So you've got two sides with an area of x squared minus four. So I'm gonna write this as two sides at area x squared minus four. You can even put a little note here. This is the front and the back is really gonna give us an area here of 2x squared minus eight. So this right here represents the area of the front and the back added together. Fantastic. Okay, now let's work on the sides. Let's get into the sides here. So I'm gonna look at like this side. We have a surface over here. But don't forget, when we get this area, we'll have to double it because over here we have another side at that same area. So to get the surface area of the sides, we're going to take length times width again because this is also just a rectangle. So we've got x plus 1 right here as this dimension. And we're going to multiply that by the other dimension here on the side, x minus 2. Okay, so let's come down here. So we're going to have to take x plus 1 times x minus 2. Okay, we know what to do here. Let's bring this down and do some distributing. So x times x, x squared x times negative 2, negative 2x, slide it, 1 times x, 1x, 1 times negative 2, negative 2, and like terms going on here, final answer here, x squared minus 1x minus 2, but I've got two sides of my rectangular prism with such an area, because I have this side and the other side, so let me double that. When I double that, I'm catching the two sides, right and left. Okay, so we go again, distribute, distribute, here we go. Two times x squared, we got two x squared. Two times negative x, that's negative two x. 2 times negative 2, that's negative 4. Okay, so what's left? What haven't we addressed yet? Well, top and bottom, two more sides. So we need to focus now on finding the area of the top, and we'll double that to give us the bottom. So we need our dimensions here. So it looks like I've got this dimension right here, which mimics this guy, x plus 2. And this guy right here mimics this guy right here, x plus 1. So length times width of this top rectangle here is going to be x plus 2 times x plus 1. x plus 2, oh, getting a little down there. x plus 2 times x plus 1 will equal, do it again x times x, x squared. x times 1, 1x. One Slide it. 2 times x, 
2x. 2 times 1 is 2. Get those like terms going. So we are looking at this face right here, this surface, having an area of x squared plus 3x plus 2, but we must double it because we're not just dealing with the top, but we also have the bottom. So this is the top and the bottom. Their areas, you just want to double here. So now we've got 2x squared plus 6x plus 4. Okay, I hope you're still with me. All right, it's a lot of work going on here. This is great math. Okay, so we've got the area of the front and the back. We've got the area of the sides, and we've got the area of the top and bottom. And now what we need to do is add together all the surfaces. And when we add these together, we will have a final surface area. So here we go. I'm gonna write surface area, which SA can be used to abbreviate that. I'm gonna start here, 2x squared minus eight. Okay, to that I'm going to add the next little section here. 2x squared minus 2x minus 4. And to that, I'm going to add the surface area of the bottom and top put together, which is this guy, 2x squared plus 6x plus 4. There we go. 1, 2, 3. Now, combine your like terms. So, we have a 2x squared, another 2x squared, and another 2x squared, so that's 6x squared. So surface area equals 6x squared. Now let me highlight, how about just the x's? We have a negative 2x and a positive 6x. I think that's it. So that is a positive 4x plus 4x. And last but not least, we have a negative eight, a negative four, and a positive four. Well, the negative four and the positive four will cancel each other, leaving me with just a minus eight. Okay, so there you have it. Now let's have some fun with this. If you've got the time, let's have some fun with this. So remember, this is all sort of abstract, all with X's. Suppose, just suppose, I'm gonna redraw this rectangular prism, okay? So we have this, bear with me here, I'm not the best drawer, but let's just say, oh goodness, I'm gonna actually really, this is how I learned how to draw this in elementary school, check this out. Here you can actually kind of see better um, the front and the back, the top and the bottom and the sides. Uh, so this is my version of this. Uh, let's choose a value of x. Like, check this out. Like, let's let, where am I here? Let's let x be, well, we've been working, we're trying to make it life easy. Uh, but we don't want to make it too small or it wouldn't make sense. Because if you look here, this one dimension is x minus 2. I almost let the x be 1. But 1 minus 2 would be negative, and that wouldn't make sense in the real world. So we got to go above 2. So why don't we let x be, uh, why don't we do 5? I want to keep it low, but make it make sense. So let's let x be 5. So check it out. If x is 5, let's get these dimensions. So check this guy out. This guy right here was 5 plus 2. So that's 7, right? So this is 7. And this guy coming back this way was x plus one. So seven, I'm sorry, five plus one. That makes him six. Okay, and what else did we have? Oh, the height, the height right here was x minus two. So five minus two is three. And so that makes, let's see, if this is seven, and then like this is seven and this is six. So do you see already how like seven times six so we have an area of 42 on the bottom and 42 on the top. You getting this? So 42 
plus 42. That's your top and your bottom. See, six and seven, six and seven. Now we've got our sides. Check it out, our sides. We've got a three by six. See this? Six this way, three this way. So that's an 18 and an 18 on the other side. So plus 18, plus 18. And now we need, oh my gosh, what haven't I done? Oh, the front and the back. So the front and the back, we have a seven times three, which is 21. And then the back's a 21. So plus 21, plus 21, all those surfaces. So I added the bottom to the top, the side to the side, and the front to the back. And I've got myself, when I do that, check it out. I'm going a little crazy here. So 42 plus 42 plus 18 plus 18 plus, was it 21? 21 plus 21? 162. My surface area, when X is 5, is 162 units squared, okay? Now check this out. Put it in here. Put it in this nice, neat surface area equation. Remember, what was X? X was 5. You ready? Can you see this? Six times five squared plus four times five minus eight. Oh, please be 162. Bingo, it's 162. See, you're getting the same answer. So all this is is a polynomial expression to represent surface area. Boy, oh boy, that is beauty. We should frame that. Okay, but we're not done. We still have volume. This one's actually easier. Volume is actually quicker than surface area. So what I'm gonna do is, because I'm out of room here, I'm gonna go like this, put an arrow here and put volume on back. And so the first thing you have to do is you have to know the volume of a rectangular prism. Do you know it? If not, I'm gonna tell you. You can look it up too. Length times width times height, three dimensions, right? So for us, it's gonna be something times something times something else. Length, width, height. So we gotta go all the way back to our picture. Here it is. Length, you ready? Boom, right here. Our length is X plus two. This is L. Our width, x plus 1, and our height, x minus 2. Length times width times height. So x plus 2, x plus 1, x minus 2. x plus 2, x minus 1. Oh my gosh, I already forget. Plus 1, I'm sorry. Plus 1 and x minus 2. Okay. Now, let's have some fun with this. Here's the deal. You can only multiply two polynomials at a time. There's, you're not gonna jump through and do all three. So step one, pick two of them and do those first. I wanna do, this is just me, I always do the back first. So I'm gonna multiply these two and leave him out of it for right now, okay? So where's my little square? Here it is. So. Cover this up, here we go. X times X, X squared. X times negative two, negative two X. Slide. One times X, positive one X. One times negative two, negative two. Combine like terms. We've got ourselves x squared minus 1x, because negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, minus 2. That is the product of these two binomials. Boom. Now, slide them down. Don't forget about them. We still have to multiply this binomial into the result here. No big deal. Cover and go. Here we go. 
Got to go three. One, two, three. 